<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Cosette here. Um, I would like to guide you uh, today through a sequence focused on uh, backbends um, and really preparation for backbends. Um, these backbends um, not only require a, a flexible spine, uh, but also involve uh, strong and lengthened um, hip flexors, quadriceps, um, it involves um, abdominal control, um, awareness of uh, pelvic movement, how your pelvis you know, can tilt forward and back and even side to side. Um, and back bends even involve um, the scapula, just awareness of how your shoulder blades move, especially if arms are above the head. Uh, so as you go through today's class, try to um, assess constantly, um, you know, ask yourself how you can better integrate each part of the body, you know, pay attention to uh, all of the nuances of poses, and know that each of our bodies is unique. So um, you know, be open, always explore, and just hold on to your autonomy. Okay? I hope that you uh, finish this class feeling more empowered okay? and uh, more open, less closed in. Uh, so we'll just begin. Okay, we're going to start today reclined, laying down. Okay. So as you um, lower onto your back, okay, just come into a constructive rest pose. Okay, you can bend your knees, Firmly plant the feet, at least hip width apart, on your mat. Okay, knees could come together. I like hands on the lower belly, okay, but just keep the arms comfortable. Mm. And perhaps closing your eyes. Consciously through the nose. Mm. And just create a soft rhythmic breath. Mm. And create a meditative cadence, allowing you to remain present, calmer, and clearer. make sure that there is room for the breath. Okay. The breath allows you also to stay adaptive, mm. less rigid. Okay, two more cycles. And open your eyes. Take a full body stretch. Arms overhead, feet forward. Mm. Roll around the wrists, the ankles, waking up your little joints. You try to reach right hand and right foot farther from each other, left hand and left foot farther from each other. And curl knees to your chest. Mm. Okay, with the help of your hands, give the legs a light pull, rocking a bit side to side. Mm. And begin to stir your knees. And they can move together or separately in different directions. Mm. Just feel the ground massaging your back. Mm. And feel the range of motion here in your hips. And then interlacing fingers over the right shin, extend the left leg forward. And just an easy when you're moving pose. You might actively drive left heel forward as you pull the right knee closer to you. Okay. If you need a soft bend in your left leg, that's fine. Okay. Lessen any extra tugging on the lower back. And 
Feel how the breath facilitates the pose. And then switching, right leg forward, left knee in. Right leg long and active. If you need a slight bend in your right knee, you can try that out. A few moments here. Release left leg forward. Okay, and let's just uh, develop a little more uh, stability, awareness, strength in our in our center trunk of the body in dead bug pose. Okay, so like tabletop on your back, you're going to stack knees over the hips, bend them about 90 degrees, and then arms up towards the ceiling, palms can face each other. Okay, keeping most of the natural curves of your spine, okay, sense them here. Okay, but then try to press your lower back okay, towards the ground. Usually there's a gap between your low spine and the floor. Try to push lower spine down, closing that gap a little bit, and drawing the navel in. Okay, still breathing through the nose. Okay, maintain that action and reach right arm back overhead, hovering the arm off the floor. At the same time, extend your left leg forward, opposite arm and leg. Return to dead bug. Left arm back and right leg forward. Everything else stays the same. Reset. Right arm back, left leg forward. Reset, dead bug. And left arm back, right leg forward. Reset. Okay, keeping legs where they are, okay, to wake up our hip flexors, front hips more. Place your palms on the front of your thighs and then just gently push palms and thighs into each other. Okay, move two forces into each other lightly, okay, breathing. Still trying to press lower back into the floor. Mm. One more breath here. Okay, lower your feet to the mat, take a pause, okay, arms by your sides. Hmm. Okay, so keeping feet about hip width apart okay, uh, and parallel, toes in front of heels. Okay. Feet don't have to be super close to your hips for this bridge pose. Okay, pushing down the feet, raise the hips. Okay, so now we lengthen the hip flexors. Feel the hamstrings work. Squeeze glute muscles a bit to add some stability. In slow motion, lower the hips down. And again, pressing feet through the mat, raise the pelvis. Do your best to keep knees neutral, hold an invisible block between them, hips down with control. One more time, raising hips. Knees still point forward. Lower the spine and pelvis down. Okay, then moving arms away from you, like a T or cactus shaped feet wider than hips, windshield wiper legs. Go right to left a few times. Okay, and if you want to bring your neck into the twist, turn your head in the opposite direction of the knees. Knees to your chest, give your legs a squeeze, maybe sway a bit. And with hands behind your thighs, rock forward and back a couple times. You just meet in a tabletop position. Okay. So from tabletop, making sure that your hips are over your knees and shoulders are over the wrists. Spread the fingers apart. When weight is in the hands, you know, root your fingertips, base knuckles, the knuckles that connect your fingers to the palm. Okay, and let's try cow and cat. Okay. So maybe on your next inhale, lift the tailbone, lower the belly. Then on your exhale, round your spine into cat. Mm. Again, 
cow tailbone high, belly low. Cat on your exhale. And continue to move, feel how the breath moves you. And as you go through cow and cat, pay attention to the relationship of the pelvis and the spine. Your pelvis dictates where the spine goes. Pelvis could tip forward to create more extension or back bending. Your pelvis tips back a little into a round. One more cycle. Okay, and then coming to a more neutral spine. Um, cinch up the waist, make sure low belly uh, isn't loose. Okay, look ahead at fingertips. Okay, and try to find a neutral position with the shoulder blades. Okay, so you're not trying to push them apart or letting them sink in too much. Okay, we're going to do scapular or shoulder blade push-ups. Okay, so pressing down hands more, okay, keeping arms straight, move your shoulder blades farther apart, broaden your upper back. Feel the shoulder blades kind of wrap around you. Remember this for weight-bearing poses and even uh, back bends when arms are overhead. Okay, now allow the shoulder blades to gently sink in towards each other. So chest moves downward towards the floor. Then again, press through hands, shoulder blades protract apart. And feel that space across the upper back. And then try to close that space with control, shoulder blades inward. One more time. Shoulder blades protracting away from each other, away from the spine. Then they move in. Okay, return to a more neutral spine, or more neutral uh, shoulder blade position. Then tuck your toes under. Okay, begin to hover your knees off the mat, raising the hips higher, walk your hands to your feet. Okay, plant the feet firmly, bend your knees a little bit at least. Taking a halfway lift, hands can push against shins, chest reaches forward beyond your toes. Fold, hands down, and knees could stay bent. Again, halfway lift, long back, shoulders away from the ears. Now for ragdoll, just drape your torso over your legs. Okay, I like to keep hands on the floor. You might like to hold opposite elbows. You can try it all out. Keep your lower body strong with weight in the front of the feet and giving freedom to your upper body. Okay, allow it to sway or stay still. Okay, and then keeping your knees bent, hands to the floor, chin towards chest, slow motion, unroll up to standing, allowing the joints to stack. Hands might walk up the legs. Head rises last. And roll the shoulders up, back, and down a couple times. Okay, no rush. Mm. Press shoulders away from the ears. Okay. Uh, keep feet about hip width distance apart, about six to eight inches apart, parallel for your first mountain pose. Okay, with arms at your sides. Make your footprints deeper. You lift the muscles above your knees slightly. So you're lifting the body from your lower half, less work from your upper half. Mm -hmm. Your breath should feel easy and still keeping it through the nose. One more cycle here to settle in. Stand your ground. Okay. On your next breath, circle the arms up. You can move sideways, maybe forward. Then folding, hinge at the hips. Bend your knees on the way. So hands reach the mat. Half lift, long through the back, gaze ahead of toes. Walk your hands forward to high plank. Okay, the shoulders are over the wrists. Arms straight. Okay, big shoulder blades apart, protraction. Firm your thighs. Okay, if you need less load, simply lower your knees. Your knees could land behind hips. Okay, from this high plank, stay strong. We're going to lower to elbows, forearm plank. 
Okay, so options again. No legs straight, knees could be down. Mm. Think tailbone to heels, low core lifted. And just look between wrists and thumbs. One more breath. Okay, gently lower your knees, then your hips for sphinx. Okay. You might have to kind of wiggle around here, okay, untuck the toes, keep shoulders um, over wrists or over elbows. Elbows can also be a little ahead of the shoulders. Push down your arms, remaining active. Raise your belly button up and in. Okay. So we don't compress lower back too much. Gazing where the neck is comfortable and feels natural. Okay, another breath. Okay, lowering your chest. Slide your hands back so they're outside your ribs, under the elbows. Tops of your feet heavy, low cobra. Using your back strength, lift the chest. The hands are very, very light. You should be able to play air piano. Lower the chest down. Okay, continue to breathe, lifting the chest for low cobra again. The arms stay close to the body. Lower down. Okay, one more time, little back bend, low cobra. Okay, stay and breathe here. If you're ready for more of a back bend, you could push the hands down strongly to lengthen arms, lift the chest, shoulders, do not shrug. Okay, you could keep thighs down for high cobra, thighs could float for upward facing dog. Child's pose is next, knees to the mat, knees at a comfortable width, big toes touch, hips towards the heels. Mm. Stay active here, reaching hands and hips farther from each other. Okay. Feel free to return to child's pose anytime. One more breath. Okay. Tabletop. Okay. The fingers spread apart. Um, Keep your thumbs comfortable and just make sure that index fingers are either pointing straight forward or slightly out. Okay, spin elbows back, okay, tuck your toes under, downward facing dog, raising the hips. Okay, so you might have to soften the knees here, legs do not need to be straight, push your hands forward. Okay, and as you settle into your downward facing dog, Make sure that your stance is wide enough side to side, long enough front to back. You could always move the hands or feet. <clears throat> and just think of wrapping the shoulder blades around you okay, or sending outer armpits downward. Okay, that's how we get space uh, between the shoulder blades when arms are overhead. Okay. It's okay if shoulders are kind of moving you know, towards the ears here. Another breath. Okay, on your next cycle, come up high on the toes, bend your knees, and take many steps to the front of the mat. Your feet could be together or hip width apart. Half lift, long back, folding forward, almost colliding with the plant. <laughs> then come up to standing, push through the feet, arms reach up, belly slightly braced, Hands to heart. Okay, arms overhead, take up space. Then folding forward, lead with your chest. Knees could bend. Half lift. High plank, planting hands, step the feet back. Okay, shoulder blades broad and apart here in this weight-bearing pose. From high plank, keeping shoulders over wrists, Lower left knee down under your left hip. Okay, stacking joints. Your right toes could stay on the mat or raise your right leg to about hip height. Okay, so driving right heel back, 
Okay, notice if the low spine or belly hammock. Okay, try to pull up the front body. And then left arm could reach forward. Mm, kind of like your dead bug earlier on your back. Okay, from here we'll bring left elbow and right knee towards each other, curling in. Then lengthen and reach for opposite walls. Elbow to knee. There might be a little wiggle. Okay. Learning to balance, expand and reach. Elbow to knee, one more time. And lengthen and reach. Just set your left hand down, listen up. Turning right foot and knee outward, carefully bring your right leg to your right, stepping your foot on the floor. Okay. Then lift up here, standing on your left knee, arms overhead. Okay. For gate pose, bring your right hand lightly onto your right leg, Okay, no added pressure, then stretch your upper body to your right. You could use some opposition here, pushing left knee through the floor, lifting through your left side, opening around the ribs and the waist. Okay, breathing in, in through the lats. Left shoulder could shrug up a bit with the arm. Now come up to center, both arms overhead. Place fingertips behind the head. Keep your gaze forward. And you start to lean your upper body away from your right leg as far as you can to the left while keeping right foot grounded. Spin the heart upwards a little bit. You feel more of your side body strengthen or engage. Your right waist pulls you back to center. And again, lean away from your right leg. Okay, a little spiral upward in the chest. Breathe. Right waist pulls you to center. Hands down for tabletop. Okay, simply bring right knee onto the mat. Tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Mm. And just rotating so you can see. And another breath or two in your downward dog. And can you knit front ribs up and in? Okay, avoid resting in the shoulders. From downward dog, high plank. A pause in plank. Shoulders stay over wrists, right knee down under the right hip. Left toes could stay on the mat or raise your left leg, but only to hip height. So we can level hips, left toes point down. Okay, notice if lower back or belly hammock. How can you pull up through the front core? And then right arm reaches forward. Okay, feel your balance on this side. A little wiggle and wobble is part of learning balance. At your pace, right elbow and left knee towards each other. Then expand and reach. Elbow to knee, no rush. Expand and reach. Your breath might help you move. Elbow to knee once more. Lengthen and reach. Right hand down. Okay, so now we're going to turn left foot out. Bring your left leg to your left and step your foot onto the floor. Okay, so left foot and right knee are, are pretty much in line with each other. You're going to stand up on your right knee and bring the arms overhead. Just getting ready for gate pose. And lengthen more through the waist. Left hand could be on left leg, but keep it weightless. Upper body bends to the left. Expanding through your right side. Try to push right knee energetically through the floor as right uh, arm reaches over. Okay, smoothly return to center, both arms up and fingertips behind the head. The elbows could be wide. We're going to tilt upper body away from the left leg as much as you can without lifting the left foot. Spin the heart upwards gently. Okay, slight rotation here. Left waist pulls you back to center. 
And try one more time, leaning away from your uh, left leg. Heart spins up. Okay, left waist pulls you to center. You can bring the hands down for tabletop. Return to all fours. Tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. Make any necessary adjustments. Okay. Checking out your base. Make sure it's long enough, wide enough. Outer armpits wrap down. Front ribs hug in. It's all about the details and keeping it together and stable. Mm. Yeah, on your next breath, come up high on the toes. Bend your knees and take many steps forward. Halfway lift. Okay, fold. And rise up to stand. Push through legs, arms overhead. Hands to heart. And for a moment, rest your arms down. Okay, another full inhale. Slow exhale. Okay, just enough effort to be tall here. Keep the curves of your spine. Okay, let's try chair pose. Our favorite, bend your knees. Okay, feet could be together, maybe they're hip width. Okay, hips low and back, arms up by the ears. Try to root into the heels, sitting a little deeper. Think of this as kind of like downward dog, um, just not inverted. So we want to draw front ribs in to the best of your ability. I know it could be difficult with arms overhead. Okay, Don't force the shoulders down. Rather, let them uh, move up, upwards a little with the arms. So your lats really help you raise your arms. Less work from the traps, the stuff between your neck and shoulders. You want things to move together, okay? Uh, practically in real life, when you reach for things, the shoulder will move with the arm. Okay. Sit deeper if you can. Mm, shoulder blades could wrap around you. Okay, folding forward, hands down. Halfway lift. High plank. Okay, so from high plank, on toes or knees, look and lean forward. Slowly lower all the way down to your stomach. Untuck your toes. Okay, and then stack hands or fists in front of you. Make a pillow for your forehead or chin. Okay, I'm just going to lift my head so that you can hear me more clearly, but you can keep your gaze down. Okay, so um, we're going to work on uh, waking up the hamstrings, the backs of the thighs, um, the glutes as well, okay? And uh, this involves extending the hips, which is when you move your thighs you know, behind you. Okay, so uh, this is needed also for back bends. Okay, begin with your legs close together. Bending your right knee, okay, the foot could be pointed or flexed. Pretend you're squeezing a tennis ball between your right calf and thigh. While you squeeze that ball, okay, lift your right knee, See if you can lift it at all. It might just be a couple inches. Okay. Keep the front of your hips level on the mat so the pelvis will be stationary this whole time. Squeeze the tennis ball, lifting your knee. Lower the knee down gently. Then again, lift your right knee, squeeze the tennis ball. Still lifting and squeezing, can you move your right knee a little to the right away from center? Then pull it back in towards midline. Okay, right knee a little to the right. Pull it into midline, still squeezing the ball. Knee to the right. Hug into center. Yes, release. Okay, take a moment of pause here. And softening the hips a bit. Hmm. Okay, other side, left knee bends. Okay, pointing or flexing the foot. Okay, maintain level hips here, grounding the front hips. Can you lift your left knee? Okay, this side's definitely a little different from my other side. Okay, that's usually the case. 
Okay, lower your left knee down. And again, lifting your knees, squeezing that tennis ball. You're extending the hip, engaging the hamstring. Okay, now you're going to move your left knee to the left just a bit. It doesn't have to be a really big motion. Hug your left knee into midline. Breathing, knee to the left. Lifting and squeezing still. Hug into center. One more time, open to the left. Pull into center and release. Give yourself a pause. Got all that stuff you were just activating it is very useful okay, for balanced back bends. Okay, option here to bend both knees, windshield wiper legs a little to the right and the left. And stretch your legs back, keep them close together, point the toes, arms back by your sides with palms facing up. And we'll try locust, not pushing too hard, lift everything. Lift your arms, chest, your legs and feet. Okay. So next, fingertips will point downwards, so your palms face back. Wrists are extended. Bend your elbows. Try to lift the elbows as you place hands outside the ribs. Tops of your feet to the ground. You could stay here or go to upward facing dog. Okay, downward facing dog. Hips high. Okay, feel free to take a child's pose in between if you need. Okay, use this down dog as somewhat of a Spinal decompressor. And try to relax the head, hips away from the hands. Mm. Okay. Steady upper body, right leg back, three legged dog. Right knee towards your nose. Okay. Step forward, closer to the right hand. Stay on the ball of your left foot. Okay, for a moment, just hover your fingertips off the mat. Okay, test the strength of your foundation and then rise to crescent lunge. Okay. Maintain this power through the legs, both legs. Okay. Um, left knee could always bend the touch. Feel how that affects your lower back. Tailbone can move slightly down and toe in the lower belly. If you did my um, previous video, we're going to try a, a similar thing again. So you're going to take your right arm down by your side, bending left elbow, left hand behind your head or to the upper back. So see if you can hold this half cow face arm okay, with strength. Right arm will go across the front ribs to lightly press front ribs down and in. Your head presses back lightly against your left arm and bend your upper body to the right. Stretch through your side, your left hip flexor. And come back to center, both arms reach up. Hands to the mat. High plank. Downward facing dog. Okay, another slow inhale, slower exhale. Left leg back, three-legged dog. Left knee to your nose. Step forward with control. Staying on the ball of your right foot, check that your feet don't cross. And just float fingertips right off your mat first, securing your base. And then rise, arms overhead. Crescent lunge. Okay. Try to integrate the body, feel how legs affect the pelvis, affect the spine. Mm. Left arm down by your side. Bending right elbow, 
the right hand behind your head, maybe upper back. Okay. Here in the front ribs, really want to flare open with that right arm, you know, um, kind of above you. So we could take left arm across the front ribs to gently press them down and in, kind of brace the core. The head presses back against right arm, stretching to the left. Side bends. Return to center with control, the arms reach up, hands down, high plank, downward facing dog. Mm. Okay, rising up on the toes, bend your knees, step or walk forward. Halfway lift, fold, and come up to standing, reaching arms above the head. Let's close it out, hands to heart. And with arms at your sides, give yourself a pause here. Finding relative stillness, the breath is always moving. And before we try balance on one leg, remembering that um, balance is also never static. Okay? So a little dance, lots of shifts and sways, teaching you how to uh, uh, rebalance and find equanimity. Okay, let's shift weight into the right foot, lifting your left knee. Mm -hmm. okay, once you feel more balanced here, supporting legs strong but adaptive, Interlace fingers in front of the left knee or under the thigh. Try to pull your knee higher towards your chest. So seeing how high you can bring your knee and how much you can flex the front of your left hip here with the help of hands first. Then can you keep your knee where it is, squeezing, contracting the front of your left hip and reach arms up. Okay, warrior three next. Sending left leg back. Now you feel the front of the left hip lengthen. Torso forward. You could keep arms ahead of you. Perhaps they're back like wings. Find the counterbalance. Working towards parallel to the ground. Okay, but it's not required. Bending right knee gently. Step back to crescent. And see if you can soften each landing. Arms up. Okay, hands to the mat. Okay, step your left foot forward. Take a halfway lift into a ball squat. So hands are down, bend your knees a lot. Heels could lift off the ground. Okay, round your back, forehead towards the knees. Okay, feel space between the shoulder blades. They wrap around you. And looking forward, we're gonna sit on the mat. Okay, for boat pose. Okay, hands behind thighs, um, legs stay together, knees bent. Hands could also be alongside you on the ground or reach forward right away. Okay, uh, start to raise feet. Okay. Now, we don't want our boat to sink, so to stay afloat, really lift up through the chest, the upper body. Okay, if you feel like your heart is really caving in, try just hovering the feet, you know, a couple inches off the ground. That could help a lot. Okay, shins could be parallel to the ground. You can even extend your legs completely. Okay, your choice with arms. Great pose, not just for abs, but the hip flexors, inner thighs, try to keep knees close. And easy shoulders. One more breath. Again, you're gonna lower the feet. Feet about hip width apart, and hands a little behind you. Okay. Option one, to just lift the chest. Okay. Option two, reverse tabletop. Pushing hands and feet down, raise the hips. Front hips to the ceiling. 
I just look forward, make a double chin. You might look at the ceiling. You squeeze glutes a bit. Then lower the hips. Cross the shins or take legs to one side. Rock forward, plant your hands, and step back to downward facing dog. Hmm. Complete another full cycle of breath. Rising up on toes, bend your knees, step or walk forward. Halfway lift, and fold. Rise up to standing, no rush to come up. Meet with hands at your heart. Okay, arms at your sides for a moment. Okay, we're back at the top of the mat. <clears throat> When you're ready, put more weight into your left leg. Okay, lifting your right knee. Find your balance here first. Tall, okay, balance begins from your foundation. Left leg strong but adaptive. Interlace fingers in front of the right knee or under the thigh. And try to pull your knee towards your chest. Okay. Can you keep your right knee where it is? See if you can use the strength of your front hip and deeper core, not to let the knee drop. And remove hands, reaching them to the sky. Pull your right knee up. Okay, then we'll glide into warrior three. You choose your arms, your expression. Right leg back, torso forward. And just do your best to level hips. Maybe you're parallel to the ground. Mm. Calm and composed. You through breath and steady eyes. Crescent lunge. Left knee bends. Soft landing. Stepping back. Okay. Hands down. Right foot steps forward. Halfway lift, another ball squat, hands could touch the floor, okay, bend your knees a lot. Okay, like a ball, really compact here, rounding through the back. Okay, you could try to balance here you know, on the toes and balls of the feet by wrapping arms around the front legs, the shins. And gaze forward. Okay, we'll gently sit down on the mat for another boat. Just go right into it, boat pose. Okay. Okay. There's a, a few expressions you could use with the arms again. Maybe they're forward, hands could be behind thighs or hands to the mat. Okay. Lifting through the chest, front hips strong again. Knees close here, inner thighs working. Inner thighs can actually be part of your center. Okay. Maybe legs extend completely. Stay afloat. One more breath. Okay, lower feet with control. Again, hip width apart. Hands a bit behind you. Option to just lift the chest or lift hips, reverse tabletop. Push your hands and feet. Back body strong too, squeezing glutes slightly. Hips down, crossing shins, maybe opposite one in front now, or legs to one side, rock forward, plant your hands, downward facing dog. Okay, a couple more breaths in downward facing dog. Right leg backing up, knee to nose, step your right foot forward, and just lower your left knee down, untucking your uh, left toes. And just pausing here, <clears throat> okay, this is a low lunge, but we'll just widen it into lizard by heel toeing right foot closer to the right edge of the mat. 
You have hands under shoulders for support. Okay, feel free to lower to the elbows, just don't force it. Hmm. How can you remain engaged in the stretch so we're not just sinking into the joints? Okay, think of hugging right hip back, squeeze left glutes lightly. Hmm. Notice where you feel the stretching, might be more in your right hip or the front of your left hip. We'll add a twist, okay, reaching right arm up to the sky. Keep your supporting arm strong. Okay, listen closely. If you want to try to stretch the front of your left um, thigh and hip more, okay, without reaching for the foot just yet, bend your left knee. Okay, you can always back out of this. Okay, bend your left knee as much as you can. Use the strength of your hamstring to pull the left heel towards you. Okay, and as you pull left heel towards you, can you reach right hand back past your left foot? Good. Stretching with strength. One more cycle. Okay, release left foot back, right hand down, untwist. Tuck your left toes under, left knee lifts, downward facing dog. Hmm. Your left leg back, knee to nose, quiet step forward, right knee down, untuck right toes, and a moment in low lunge, and heel toe left foot closer to the left edge of your mat, okay, for lizard. You have hands for support, chest forward, actively, lightly engage your right glutes. A little squeeze. And just keep pushing into the floor. Okay, avoid um, resting here. Okay, more active as you stretch okay, for more stability. Okay, continue to press through your right arm or right hand. Left arm towards the ceiling to add your twist. Keep left arm up for now. Okay, don't let right shoulder shrug up into the shoulder, or uh, shrug up into the ear. Okay, can you bend your right knee? Okay, this is not required. You can skip it if it doesn't serve you. But bending right knee, just use the strength of your right hamstring to bend the knee. To try to pull a right heel towards you. Then left hand reaches back past the right foot. Okay, so not holding the foot not just pulling you know, so much with leverage to get a, a deeper stretch. With control, right foot back, left hand down. Okay, tucking right toes under, right knee lifts, find downward facing dog. Mm. Okay, move into a plank. On toes or knees, okay, look and lean forward, lower all the way down to your stomach. Mm. Okay, untuck the toes. Okay, I'm going to try a one bow pose, bending both knees, hands reach back for the outer feet. Okay, if you'd rather do locust, you can keep arms and legs straight. For bow, okay, uh, start to kick back into your hands, kick back. Try to lift your chest and thighs, recruit not just the spine, but your hamstrings, your glutes, kick back and up. Okay, if uh, the back bend is causing you to hold your breath, just try shorter cycles instead. Kicking here, okay? Don't push so hard though if you uh, had a big meal before this. Kick back. Okay, can you smoothly release? Arms and legs down, look to the left. So right ear on your mat. Okay, try to still breathe you know, voluntarily, consciously through the nose. Slow it down. Okay, look the other way. 
left ear on the mat. Okay, let the shoulders drape even more. Breathe into the belly, through the mat. Chin to center, hands by your ribs, child's pose. Mm. Stretch in the back. Okay, the closer your knees are, the more your back will actually round and stretch. So you can do this with knees together, perhaps they're wide. Hands by your knees, lifting your head and chest. Okay, so just coming to, into a simple kneeling position. If you need to stand on your knees or sit cross-legged instead, that's okay. Um, I will uh, talk through how we're going to approach camel pose today. So just observing uh, first. <clears throat> we'll start um, traditionally, you know, standing on the knees, knees about hip width apart. And you could have toes tucked or untucked. Okay, this just elevates the heels, you know, tucking the toes. Um, it might provide a little more stability as well. Okay. Uh, arms are going to be long and straight at your sides. So you feel this straight line of energy from knees to shoulders. Okay, we're not going to break this line okay, at first. Okay, so with this long line, embrace the core a bit. Um, tailbone slightly down just so we don't fall into the lower back, okay? First, you're going to lean back a little bit. So you're hinging at the knees, not the hips. Leaning back, but not back bending. And then come up here with strength. Feel your lower body really work. And again, you're gonna lean back, maybe a little farther. Still straight from knees to shoulders. And then come up with control. Breathing. Last one, you're gonna lean back, maybe even farther. Smart with knees. This could be your camel today, still braced, really strong. You could also bring hands to heels. Then maybe press the hips up and forward. A little more hip extension, lifting behind the spine, okay? So you have a balanced back bend. Then you're gonna bring your hips back, arms to your sides, and stand up straight. All right, so I'll try it again, cueing, cueing you through it. Standing on knees. <clears throat> Arms glued to your sides. So try not to bend at the hip or the elbow, straight from knees to shoulders. And gazing forward. Mm -hmm. Lean back just a little bit first. Okay, we'll move in steps, ease into it. Okay, with strength, push through the mat, rise up to where you started. And then again, leaning back to the same point or a little further. Then rise smoothly. Last one, leaning back, okay, maybe farther. This could be your camel. Option to hold the heels. Now that you're leaning back, you might be able to reach them better. Then extending through the hips, press the pelvis up a little forward and opening the front body. One more breath here, wherever you are. And hips back. Arms at your sides, rise up with control. Yay, all right, cool little party move. Okay, so standing or sitting now on the heels, come to kneeling, okay, and give yourself a few breaths. Okay, that approach to camel um, just provides more insight on how you can um, integrate more of the body in your back bends. Okay, so not just putting it all in the spine, especially you know the low back, uh, but recruiting your lower body, your your thighs, your your hips, okay, all the way up through abdominals, spine. Okay, take another breath where you are. Mm. And then sitting on your mat, hips to one side, legs forward. Mm. Yeah, let's take the soles of the feet together. Okay, holding ankles or outer feet, sit as tall as you can. Okay, you might have to open up the diamond, moving feet forward. Okay, 
in if that helps you to sit taller um, encourage slightly more forward tilt in the pelvis okay, do your best and chest forward hinging at the hips move into this easy fold okay. not focusing too much on depth okay. and keeping a relatively long back okay. so rounding is normal as there are curves in the spine and sitting up, hands to outer knees, legs together, lower onto your back. Mm. One stronger back, take a full body stretch, arms overhead, feet forward. Okay, and then rebend your knees to step your feet on the mat. And we'll set up a twist. The arms could be wide, um, cactus, they could stay overhead, you decide. And just bump your hips a little more towards the right side of the mat. And cross right thigh over left. If you'd rather keep legs uncrossed and together, that's another option. Your knees slowly drop to the left. And your head might turn right. Firming abs, untwist, uncross your legs, scooting hips more towards the left side of your mat, left thigh, over right. Okay, and then the knees slowly fall right. You could look left. twist, a little belly strength helps on cross legs, center hips. Happy baby. Mm. Okay. You can hold outer feet, ankles or shins, maybe thighs, knees wide, moving freely. Stillness is also welcome. Mm. Try to press your hips towards the mat. And bend your knees completely, wrapping arms around the legs. Mm. As you give yourself a hug, thank yourself for returning to your mat again and again. And settle down for your final resting pose. Maybe a more traditional Shavasana with legs and arms down to the floor. Take time to get comfortable and Position yourself so you feel easy and supported. Mm. Okay, scan the body, see where you can soften a little more okay, from your head and down through the, the neck, the shoulders. Knees to toes. Can you find contentment simply being here, breathing naturally through the nose? Yeah, I can't thank you enough for joining me here and I hope you can carry all that you've learned and all of the grace and ease you've cultivated with you off your mat with gratitude namaste